Have you ever wondered how guilt manifests in our subconscious? That's a thought-provoking question, Lily. It reminds me of the movie Inception and the protagonist Cobb. Exactly, Donald. The exploration of Cobb's psyche provides a unique insight into how guilt can shape our actions and our reality. Interestingly, the film uses dreams as a metaphor for our inner turmoil. Cobb's guilt not only directs his actions, but infiltrates his dreams too. This brings forth another line of thought. How does guilt make us self-destructive? Cobb, for example, despite knowing the source of his guilt, kept going back into the dreams. It's an exploration that just might unlock the mysteries of our own minds. And notably in Cobb's case, it's guilt around the tragic demise of his wife, Mal. Let's not forget the unique element of the totem. Cobb's guilt is constantly reminded through his wedding ring. Do you suppose our guilt has the power to redefine our reality? In the realm of inception, the complexity of that question gains several dimensions. I'm reminded of Cobb's self-destructive tendencies, which often seem a consequence of his guilt. Guilt does have a way of amplifying our negative behaviors in real life as well. Would you liken that to Cobb's decisions in the movie? Absolutely. If we consider how his guilt pushes him deeper into his dream world, despite knowing the chaos it creates, it does mirror real-life scenarios of self-sabotage. This is fascinating. So essentially the dream world acts as an amplifier for his deep-seated guilt? Yes, that's a way to see it. The dream world not only provides an escape for Cobb, but also acts as a stage where his guilt orchestrates an elaborate play. However, understanding the importance of this play lies in comprehending how guilt could relentlessly gnaw into one's psyche even outside the dream world. It seems the movie has brilliantly utilized this psychological concept, embedding it into Cobb's character. I wonder, though, how does this guilt affect his relationships, especially with his children? It's interesting you bring that up, Matthew. Cobb's subconscious guilt causes him to persistently run from reality, hence obstructing his reunion with his children. This could be seen as an extension of his self-destructive habits induced by guilt. So it's guilt that shapes Cobb's dream world and ultimately his actions. Donald, you mentioned earlier how this mirrored self-sabotage in real-life scenarios. Do you think this guilt and resulting self-destructive behavior is what feeds his recurring dreams? That's one way to interpret it, Lily. You see, in the realm of inception, dreams serve as an extension of one's subconscious. Now for Cobb, his overwhelming guilt translated into these vivid dreams. And as we know, these dreams, dictated by his guilt, begin to take a toll on his decisions and overall conduct. I always found it interesting how director Chris Nolan masterfully used these dreams as a narrative trajectory. Through them, we understand Cobb's feelings and actions, making them not just plot devices, but also character development tools. Matthew, that's an interesting observation. Undoubtedly, the movie does an excellent job of intertwining Cobb's dreamscape with his developing character. In Cobb's case, his dreams, laced with guilt, don't just influence his actions, but shape his entire psyche in the process. Can we connect it to Freud's theory of dreams? As I understand, Freud suggested that dreams are venting emotions locked in our subconscious, right? Cobb's guilt, thus, is projected in these dreams. Wow, Lily, that indeed could be a plausible interpretation. Connecting it back to his actions, guilt being an incredibly powerful emotion unless properly dealt with, can end up altering one's reality, just like it did for Cobb. Absolutely, Matthew. It's fair to say that Cobb's entire dream reality is sculpted by guilt. His inability to confront and resolve these feelings simply amplified their impact, driving him into a cycle of self-destruction and further guilt. The portrayal of this in Inception is indeed thought-provoking. Doesn't unresolved guilt have a real destructive potential? It's like Cobb's grip on his dream reality is getting more and more chaotic as his guilt, this deep-seated regret, remains unaddressed. Are there any real-life parallels to this? Certainly. From our actions to our thoughts, guilt can play a significant role. It's like an invasive weed breaking through the concrete of our defense mechanisms cracking our mental equilibrium when left unresolved. Applying this to Cobb, 
It isn't far-fetched that his guilt is altering his dream world, right? Actually, you're spot on, Lily. Cobb's guilt, because it was left unresolved, didn't just alter his dream world, it practically hijacked it. What should have been a safe space for him became a battleground roiled by guilt and regret, mirroring the psychological dynamics of an individual grappling with these powerful emotions in real life. So his dream reality was sort of his... prison? Created by his guilt? Seems like it. His dream world becomes more distorted and unstable because he is unable to face his guilt. In essence, he becomes a prisoner of his own making, showcasing the pervasive nature of such intense emotions. And therein lies the crux. Cobb's choices and actions, all the way down to his outlook on reality, are dictated by this unchecked emotion. That guilt, left hanging like a proverbial sword of Damocles, ends up controlling his dream reality, setting a course for self-destruction. What if we were to consider Cobb's wedding ring as a physical representation of his guilt? A possibility, indeed. Cobb's wedding ring, his totem, right? Yes. Remember how he always had it on during the dream sequences? Almost as if it's a physical manifestation of his guilt. A constant reminder of his past, of his unresolved issues. That's a fascinating perspective. So, if you guys are suggesting that the wedding ring is his physical guilt... Could it be that it's also what's tethering him to his dream world? I do believe so, Matthew. Subconsciously, it keeps reminding him about his guilt. And this guilt then acts like a script for his dream world, molding it according to the remorse he feels. Sort of how dreams are believed to relate to our real-life experiences and emotions. Following this theory, Cobb's totem becomes more than just a reality check device, but a constant bond between his conscious and subconscious. A physical manifestation of a deeply spiritual struggle, with the totem being both a reminder of guilt and a gatekeeper to another realm. It offers quite a unique look into how our minds work. Jumping back to the ring, is it not fascinating how this object is more than just a symbol of guilt? How it's used by Cobb's subconscious to distinguish his dreams from reality? Absolutely, Matthew. It adds an extra layer to how guilt can shape our perception of reality. I see it as a concept that goes beyond the film. It's a universal idea, in fact. We've all experienced situations where our emotions have warped the way we perceive reality. In Cobb's case, his overwhelming guilt is his reality in his dreams. The ring, consequently, serves the purpose of that reality check, grounding him back to his true emotional state. Donald, you bring up a good point. It's the physical confirmation of what his inner world feels like. Well, Cobb's emotional turmoil certainly shapes the dreaming world around him. The ring then becomes like an emotional compass honing in on his guilt. This makes me wonder. If guilt can be made tangible through a ring in the dream, does this imply that our emotions have the potential to take physical form here in our genuine reality? Lily, that'd be an interesting thought to ponder on. Maybe our totem isn't just an object, but more of our personal gravitation towards certain routines or behaviours. Perhaps they're what anchor us to reality. So Let's Dissect Dreams is presented in Inception. In the world of Inception, dreams become a refuge for Cobb, don't they? Definitely. His guilt manifests so vividly in his reality. Being able to manipulate his dream world gives him the illusion of control. Maybe even a sense of purification. It's almost as if dreaming is a way for him to cope with his guilt and reality. Would you say dreaming acts as an escape for Cobb? Well, it's a bit more complex than just being an escape. See, Cobb's not only shaping his dream world, but also interacting with it. The dreams become more tangible and real than his actual reality. And therein lies the danger. When dreams simulate our reality, how do we know what's real? That's an intimidating thought. I wonder if that reflects our human need to control our narratives, to rewrite our unpleasant experiences. I see that, Lily. A crucial aspect of Cobb's dream includes lucid dreaming, which in real-life scenarios requires awareness and practice. In Cobb's case, he's not just lucid dreaming, but also shaping his dream reality, perhaps as an attempt to purge his guilt. 
This is where shared dreaming also comes into play. Although it's not a real-life scenario, shared dreaming in Inception intensifies the blurred line between reality and dreams. It's amazing how Inception scrupulously manages to mold these heavy concepts into a form of cinematic storytelling. Couldn't agree more, Lily. The movie's portrayal of dreams and reality beautifully exhibits our collective struggles with perception, guilt, and reality. Cognitive psychology suggests our conscious mind represents just the tip of the mental iceberg, doesn't it? Yes, and Inception takes that theory to a whole new level with shared dreaming. Each dreamer's subconscious likely influences the dream, shaping it in ways unique to their psyche. But how does shared dreaming relate to theories on collective consciousness? Well, Donald, collective consciousness theorizes that individuals within a group share similar thoughts and ideas. In the context of Inception, the dreamers could collectively influence the dreamscape and its narrative. So we could look at shared dreaming as a metaphor for collective consciousness. We're all adding our own perceptions and experiences into a shared narrative. It's a fascinating concept and brings forth questions about how much our perception of reality is influenced by shared experiences and thoughts. Or how our shared dreamscapes, in the case of Inception, can be manipulated by others, much like our collective consciousness in real life. It adds another layer of complexity, doesn't it? Certainly. It magnifies humans' complexity, making it almost impossible to think of the mind as an infallible reality filter. So let's untangle this enigma of repentance. What makes Cobb blame himself, forcing him into such a heart-wrenching journey? In my interpretation, Cobb's guilt is his driving force. He's trapped in this loop of remorse over his wife's death. He blames himself for her suicide, and thus his guilt becomes his very own tormentor. A tormentor that keeps him locked in his dream world, Projecting it onto the buildings, isn't it? Yes, and his totem, the wedding ring, serves as the constant reminder of his guilt. Each glance at it reminds him of his failed reality, feeding his remorse. In your view, Lily, how does our environment and guilt interact? How could guilt transform our reality? That's intriguing, Matthew. Though I'm unsure about the exact psychological connection... I've seen in my line of work that guilt compels us to take responsibility. But when it becomes overwhelming, it could morph our perception of reality, much like it does for Cobb. It's interesting to see guilt as a force that leads to penance. Even from a technological perspective, Cobb's guilt acts as a sort of programming code that keeps recreating similar scenarios in his dreams. Now this makes me wonder how his guilt directly impacts his relationship with his kids. Donald, any ideas? His guilt seems to separate him from his children in reality, but drives him to reconnect in dream. It's almost like a code that needs debugging to stop this loop of guilt and redemption. Awakening from the dreamy labyrinth of guilt. What does Cobb's repentance indicate? Seems like his repentance is a therapeutic approach to his searing guilt. Cobb, in a way, is using his culpability to evolve as an entity. Isn't that a classic example of Skinner's negative reinforcement? As Cobb experiences guilt, he enforces changes in his projections to escape the unpleasant emotions, essentially teaching himself. Interesting analogy, Donald, but does this guilt and repentance work to sustain Cobb as a character? That's an unusual way to think about it, Lily. Here's a perspective, though. Cobb's basic character arc orbits his guilt. His reactions and decisions spring from it, making it an integral part of his journey. Moreover, his repentance seems to provide closure. As Cobb overcomes his guilt, he's able to confront his ghosts, his wife, and eventually reconcile with his past. In marketing terms, Cobb's guilt and repentance cycle gives him depth, making him more relatable. It's like inception of guilt and subsequent extraction plays key role in defining him. Fantastic point, Matthew. Like tectonic movements shaping the Earth's landscapes, Cobb's guilt shapes his character. But unlike natural phenomena, Cobb has a choice. His repentance gives him control over his transformations. So, let's look at the progression of Cobb's mental state. 
Right. From the start, the movie presents Cobb as haunted, plagued by his guilt, eating away at his consciousness like acid tides eroding a shoreline. Well, even within the canvas of dreams, he's an isolated, troubled figure. The weight of guilt seems to seep into his imagined world, turning the lush gardens of his mind into a barren desert. Interesting imagery, both of you. Remember how the arc progresses. As Cobb dives deeper into the labyrinth of his mind, his self-destructive tendencies amplify, escalating the tension. Speaking of tension, isn't the climax a perfect depiction of his psychological turmoil? Surrounded by chaos, he just stands there seemingly lost, perhaps finally acknowledging the depth of his guilt. I think you're on to something, Lily. And yet, amidst that chaos, there emerges a hint of resolution, a break in the storm clouds of his guilt. Or am I reading too much into the ending? No, Matthew, I think you're spot on. The finale gives us a glimpse of the new Cobb, the potential of a healed psyche still tortured, yet perhaps with a better grasp on his guilt. You know, another contributing factor could be his cumulative experiences, both real and imagined. They undoubtedly play a role in his mental evolution. As he confronts his deepest fears and guilt, his brain adapts, pulling him towards a different course. So, a fascinating journey then, from a troubled explorer of dreams to a guilt-laden figure staring into his own abyss, and finally, an embodiment of the human mind's resilience under psychological stress. And, as we all know, the path to growth often lies through pain. Lily, Matthew, remember the horrifying scene with the train. You can see the drastic impact it has on Cobb's psyche. It symbolizes his guilt, but also his wish to escape and the destructive tendency within him. It manifests physically, suggesting his mental health's impact on his dream reality. And how about his constant attempts to bring Mal back, even though it's self-destructive? It's like he's trying to right a wrong but ends up increasing his burden. His guilt intensifies as he keeps repeating this pattern. I'm also thinking about the significant decision he makes by the end. When he finally lets Mal go, it's not just a turning point in the plot, but also in his mental state. The way he finally accepts the reality, you can see a shift there. I see, so essentially, his actions throughout the film are dictated by his guilt his remorse built up through significant events, leading to his eventual redemption. Absolutely. And it's not just about his guilt or dream world, but how these aspects interact. The effects of these experiences go beyond his mental state, influencing his perceptions and changing him fundamentally. Let's talk about the spinning top, arguably the most symbolic element of Inception. Nolan, the director, has used this curious object as a tool for Cobb to question his reality. What does it signify? Well, symbols like the spinning top are open to interpretation, but it can be seen as Cobb's own reality check. Remember his intense focus every time he spins it? He's not just playing with a toy. He's testing the fabric of his reality. It's virtually like an environmental monitor that constantly checks the health of our natural world. Interesting. In addition to working as a reality check, the spinning top is a direct representation of Cobb's guilt. Its continuous spinning is a grim reminder of the mistakes he's made, of the guilt that he carries. But if we go a little further, the top's uncertain state of motion might be a symbol of Cobb's inner turmoil. It's like he's the top, spinning endlessly, unable to find a firm grounding because of his guilt. Do you think this interpretation aligns with how we see Cobb's guilt operating in the narrative? That's definitely a plausible interpretation, but we should also talk about the intricate architectural mazes in Cobb's dreams. I'm curious about how you relate those mazes to his state of mind. I associate the architectural mazes with the complexity of our internal struggles. Much like our minds, they're intricate, confusing, and one can easily get lost. For Cobb, they can symbolize his struggle to navigate his guilt, constantly trapped trying to find a way out. Indeed. Just as mazes are designed to confuse and misdirect, Cobb's mental state seems to lead him astray, further into the depths of his guilt. They're not something external, 
but a reflection of his chaotic inner world. That's a good point. Also, why else would Cobb construct such complex dream architecture if not to hold at bay the complicated feelings of guilt and regret that threaten to consume him? He loses himself in these mazes as a means of avoidance, similar to how we often lose ourselves in sophisticated technology to avoid facing difficult truths. In Inception, Cobb turns to dreams as a coping mechanism, much like we all use distractions to fend off our harsh realities. Has anyone noticed similar traits in other film characters? Blade Runner's protagonist, facing ethical dilemmas, often dwells in memories, not quite dreams, but a similar escape. It's like dualism, isn't it? The contrast between physical reality and a mental realm, whether dreams or memories. It helps characters like Cobb break down the wall of their guilt. This tension allows them to face their deep-seated issues indirectly. Would you agree, then, that Cobb's habit of escaping into dreams operates as a form of refuge from his guilt-ridden decisions? Absolutely, Matthew. From a sci-fi perspective, parallel dimensions or simulated realities are often designed with underlying quests to escape. Cobb constructs one to dodge his guilt, but the escape itself becomes the source of his struggle. It's like drowning oneself in the sea in the hope of quenching thirst. Similar to how we might avoid confronting our environmental crimes by showcasing technological triumphs. But these bearings only push us deeper into the problem, spinning like that top, a constant perilous reminder of our guilt. So, dreams are Cobb's quicksand. The more he struggles, the more entwined he gets. Possibly his dreaming is an essential part of his downward spiral, not a soothing balm. Matthew, you have crystallized it. This indeed paints a new light on the psychological implications that underline the dream sequences and how intricate they are in depicting the internal struggles of Cobb. Cobb's self-imposed guilt and his subsequent journey in Inception give us a lot to chew on. But how can we relate this to our current day? Inception isn't just a story about a man navigating his dreams. It tells the tale of guilt, reality, and the consequences of our actions. Much like in our real world, where our actions often lead to unintended consequences, which can be difficult to cope with. The Quest for Knowing Reality and Manifesting Guilt It is as pertinent today as it was when Inception was released. The pressures of modern life push us to question our reality, and we have our share of guilt that drives our actions, consciously or subconsciously. Talking about guilt's enduring resonance. We live in an era where living a guilt-free life has become a social commitment. From zero-waste communities to conscious consumerism, there's a global push towards mitigating feelings of collective guilt. Absolutely, Lily. Much like Cobb's character arc demonstrates, guilt serves as a constant reminder to confront our actions and help us become stronger, more responsible individuals and communities. Cobb's reality, his guilt and his dreams three pivotal aspects of inception. We may not control dream realities or have a spinning top to gauge our world, but we do grapple with the intertwining nature of guilt, dreams and reality, much like Cobb did. So, as we think about Cobb's struggle and his journey towards self-understanding, we should all reflect on our own reality, guilt and dreams.